Hello and good day. We're hoping you're having an awesome day. We're going to talk about Veeam doing this tag unplugged take, and we seen Veeam present during the Tech Field Day 22 that we're both attending as delegates. And I'm here with my partner in crime, Max Modellaro. Good morning, Max. Hello. Hello, Ren. So, Max, yesterday we saw the presentation from Veeam. And first of all, I want to mention that this was one of the best presentations that I've seen um, during the tech field days. And I've been to a lot. You've been to a lot. Uh, and I, I, I definitely feel that you um, had the same experience as me. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. So I have to say uh, on that topic that, uh, you know, this year is a bit special because we are doing all of the tech field days, all of the presentations are uh, streamed. And when you do stuff like data protection, I'm sorry to say I love a lot of data protection companies, but it's not the most sexy topic ever in the industry, right? So I have to say kudos to, to Veeam for making it interesting for the world to hours. So yeah, that's uh, yep. all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 I think a lot of companies could learn from looking at what Veeam did during this presentation. I think if they will look back on how this was structured and how they did this, um, that would really help them uh, to become a good present presenter during one of the field days as well. Absolutely. And maybe also to say that we really appreciated that there was some kind of mixity that we had the women, ladies, presenting it's always yeah. great i think it's good to uh, to get to this uh, kind of uh, ratio in presentation yeah and and and, and that's it right you know uh, rick vanover has been a field day delegate as well so he knows what he needs to do uh, because he's been on the other side of the room um, mm -hmm. but uh, kicking off with some questions um, let the delegates uh, just say a few things even if it's just a couple of words it directly changed the room and it yeah it just went uh, for a much better presentation if you ask me um so from that perspective we have about five points that were discussed during this uh, presentation um i think we should start start with the veeam availability suite um rick uh, started with that as well um, and it was a, a bit more focused on the enhancements that they're doing for the object storage part. So um, from my perspective, I really think that that is one of the, 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 the great things that we see happening in the industry, that we on one side have the object storage vendors that provide that kind of skill, because for me, object storage is mainly about skill. Um, and the other side that, um, yeah, the, the backup vendors are hooking into that and leveraging that object storage um, from a much broader perspective and helping their customers um, leveraging that as well. So what's your view on that? Well, I think that one, one important key thing here talking about Veeam is that Veeam has been, uh, first of all, and has been over the, the course of these 11 years, always focused on software. So the, I think the big difference between Veeam and the others is that they are partnering with other companies when it comes to what do we do on the back end, right? Backups are huge. You need to retain them. Uh, it's, uh, it's not something which is just going away like that. So you need a lot of capacity to do that. And, and it needs to be architected properly. So we know that they have partnerships with most of the major storage vendors, at least people in the secondary storage space and so on. But what they have is this, uh, what they call the uh, uh, object storage repository. And what was interesting here is that they have kind of uh, three tiers. Uh, they have one tier for performance in case you need to get something ASAP. You have a capacity tier and then you have an archival tier. What's interesting is that you can combine that to put data either on premises or on the cloud, on the capacity tier. <clears throat> and that means that uh, in, in that perspective, because it's object storage, right? It's not going to be a file system. It's, it needs to be S3 compatible. So either you can put your data in uh, any of the major public clouds. I, I believe that at least AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud are supported and probably 
any other vendor, any other public cloud supporting S3, which I guess everybody should be supporting that as well. And then you can also decide to put some S3 compatible storage on premises. The other thing which was really interesting here was the fact that they also have an archival tier where you can determine the period you want to use to archive data. And that means that the data is going to be stored probably on tape, like a glacier or anything of that kind. And you can also hear one, one great thing is that even if you define a period of time, which is, for example, five years, you can extend the period of time you want in case some new archival requirements show up. For example, a legal challenge, whatever you need to return the data for more time, changes in legislation. So that was really cool, you know, and, and, and of course, yeah, it's also something that um, a lot of companies are struggling with, right? The archival tier, um, doing that on tape, uh, making sure that uh, your tape is still accessible after all those years. Because if you need to get it back, um, you need the, the 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 storage hardware to do something like that, right? Um, as well as the um, making sure that your data is uh, immutable, um, mm -hmm. so it can be taken by a ransomware attack. Um, so there was a lot to talk about during yeah. Uh, yeah. only that, uh, but I think it would be good if we uh, we take it over to the second point, which yeah, is exactly. theme one. Uh, take it off. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, the, the next point, the next point we have here was Vim1. So I'm going to be just talking about that briefly because I think that uh, uh, I want to share some experience on that. So I, I've started seeing and using Vim1 maybe eight or nine years ago. At the time, it was a very basic product. And it, it, it's, uh, we'll get to that later when we speak about the direction of Vim. But it was a time where Vim was very much focused on SMBs. And it was just doing the job, monitoring some stuff, some VMware. Uh, infrastructures and so on, but it seems the product has evolved into something much bigger. It has public cloud connectors. It is uh, showing data not just on the Veeam infrastructure, but also on, on many other things. And I really love the way it integrates the interface. So do you want to share a couple of thoughts on that as well? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that one. It's grown immensely, and I think that's a good thing but for me, there are still a lot of things that should be in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a lot in it already. Um, but um, yeah, like you already said, we're, we'll be talking about the Veeam strategy as well. And I think if you look at that, there needs to be change in uh, direction of Veeam 1 as well, a little bit more than what I'm seeing right now. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, it it, it it really went a far away from what it was eight years ago. Uh, I always thought Veeam was a VMware company. Um, that's yeah. how they got to market, and that's always how I looked at them. Um, and I think now, it, it kind of gives us a, a great, sorry to cut you, but I think it gives a great also jump into the next one, which is the DR orchestrator. Because when we're talking about VMware, all of us have been working with SRM, right? And you know that SRM, I mean, it was great five, six years ago, but sometimes it feels like a pain in the ass. Sorry to, uh, we're going to have to censor that on the on the YouTube video. <laughs> but, uh, we're, we're talking with VMware right, this afternoon, right? So um, take it easy. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, You'll well, be blocked. We, well let, let's see how they're, how they're going to impress us. I think they will, um, and I think that's exactly what you're saying, and 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 that's going back to the DR orchestrator as well, um, because the a VMware to this afternoon will be mainly talking about the Datrium uh, takeover that they did, um, mm -hmm. which tells a little bit about what is going on at VMware as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I think with the DR orchestrator from Veeam, a lot of customers that really hook into that and are looking into that because there's so much going on in, in, in the IT industry with on-premises, cloud how am i going to to go from here to there what about migration what about making sure that all of my um servers are protected in a way that it's okay to have a backup but what if a disaster happens um yeah you want to make sure that you're um up and running with at least the the primary applications um 
not in days, but in 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 an hour. And at most companies want to be back in business right away. So having an orchestrator and making sure that everything fits together like a, like a glove on a hand, uh, I think that's really where Veeam comes in and can help their customers. Um, any thoughts from your side? Uh, just a closing thought on that. It's what I really enjoyed is, I mean, uh, doing, you know, moving VMs, uh, making sure they start on the other side. Of course, it's really important. I mean, that's what you expect, right? But there are so many things you need to do before and after your DR test. So it's just just about orchestrating the VM and so on. But you need to do a series of things, you know, verify that, for example, the network is accessible. You need to verify ping something, you know, do this, do that. All of these steps that many times people have had as manual steps in, the, in their DR plan. People have to document their DR plan as we need to verify this, we need to verify that, and so on. And DR Orchestrator from Veeam, at least from what I saw yesterday, seems to automate a lot of that. So it's not just that, but also the ability to have this lab which allows you to execute and test if your world, if your whole DR plan is working as it should. So I really love that. But again, we're time constrained and we need to move to the next one. And I'm curious to hear what you think about Kasten because that was a big highlight yesterday. Yeah, I. I looked. At, we even talked about the takeover from Veeam for Carsten, and I, yeah. I really like that a company like Carsten comes into the the Veeam family, um, because I think if you look at it, nine out of ten times, even Veeam was a startup company that focused on one thing and doing one thing right. Um, and I think Carlson does the same. So they're focusing on the Kubernetes world and everything in it, and they want to be the number one in yeah, making sure that those environments are protected as well. Um, and that is something that I really appreciate, and I think it really fits well with the theme takeover. But... <laughs> Um, and it was one of the questions that was asked as well. Um, for now, you can do some stuff from one interface, but to do everything, you need you still need two interfaces. So it needs to be built together. It needs to be brought into the Veeam um, availability suite, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe I'm even going to go the other side. I think I really love the v, the Kasten interface, and I think that you know, if we moved their interface to something small like Kasten, that would be even better. You know, so but, maybe uh, they will do that. <laughs> hopefully, I mean, who knows? Uh, I'm I'm a bit of a of a nerd for user interfaces, so, yep. so there's that. Yeah, but, but again, I, I I really appreciate it that. Um, they showed us um, what it can do now, they sh and 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 that's actually already going to the the last point that we have. The strategic direction that they have um, is is getting it together and making sure that they can deliver on what their customers are asking of them. Um, even in some cases, um, moving between clouds uh, because mm -hmm. that's what they showed as well. So. Um, and it was the best thing I've seen actually yesterday. <laughs> Perhaps you know vMotion for uh, cloud native workloads. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you look at it that way, yeah, that's yeah. absolutely true. And that's yeah, I really like Veeam in the sense that they are always either doing it themselves, but in a in a, in a way and in a, a speed that a lot of companies cannot do. Um, or they take over something like Carson and bring it into their portfolio. And, and yeah, that's what I really like about Veeam. They're always on top of the game. Yeah. Um, okay. Even if it's a, a game that a lot of us think of us, uh, think about uh, like cloud data management. What can it yeah. be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. And I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's really hard even for us because we'd like to talk so much about Veeam. But we are kind of running out of time. We wouldn't do enough justice, even if we were talking for half an hour. So Probably. let's talk about the strategic direction. So uh, one of the things that was presented at the very beginning of the presentation by Rick was where Veeam was, and that's what you said at the beginning, you know, VMware hypervisor based backup and primarily backup and a bit of monitoring and where it's going now. So Veeam was acquired at the beginning of the year 
by uh, some investment company. I don't remember the name right now, but it's not relevant. And uh, one of the fears that people had in the industry at the time was what's going to happen? Because at, for the time when it was self-funded, they had some direction and so on. And when those kind of acquisitions happen, you never really know what's going to happen. Are they going, you know, to kind of and use a leash, you know, and start whipping people and people, the, the talent is going to leave or what's going to happen. And that was just amazing. I mean, if you look all that's been going on this year for Veeam, frankly, I never had such an exciting presentation from Veeam until today. So what do you think about the direction? Yeah, I, I can say many more words than what you already told, but <laughs> let's put it this way. They, uh, I already mentioned that, that I think that Veeam is always on top of the game. So there, you already mentioned that they're a software company. Um, they want to be a software company because that gives them the opportunity to do things quickly and get their partners in to help them even give more to the customers. Um, and that is their direction. If you look at it, from what we saw yesterday, they are focused on bringing what their customer needs. And um, there's a lot going on in this industry. Um, I think, we, like you already mentioned, we can talk a half an hour on this and, uh, and probably even longer. Um, I think from my perspective, is if there would be one thing that I'm uh, missing a little with Veeam, it is what some of their um, competitors have is that I'm thinking in the end, you've got a, a load of data and what are you going to do with it? Is it yeah. just to provide your customer a backup archival and disaster recovery option or do you want to do more with the data? And yeah. and that's the that was something that I, didn't really see from Veeam yesterday. Yeah, and 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 it touches to the point of you know data management. So moving data, making sure it's placed properly, making sure you don't lose it is data management in, to some extent. But there are so many definitions you can have of data management, right? So the insights and so on. And I think that it's probably a good way to close our discussion today, yep. unless we want to talk for another twenty minutes. So thank <laughs> you very much, Arian, and uh, stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.